morning about coming back to life, receiving from God. What do you need God to do for you? What do you need help with this morning? Is there something that's bothering you? Is there something that has happened to you? Is there something you've been struggling with that you need to see a change in? What do you need to see come back to life in your life? Has something died besides the Packers? No, okay, let's... <laughs> I told you that the Bears will buy them 25 cents on the dollar. We'll take over the stadium and everything. Is that true? Is that all right? Last week it was 35. And we're going down today. Hey, listen. Um, boy, now I'm going to have to really get my thoughts together after this. Uh, after, at 12.30 or whatever, when it's over, we're going to put the game on here, but we'll have the uh, music on, though. So we'll put on the big screen if you want to stay for a few minutes. Feel free um, if you want. Now, where was I at? <laughs> Receiving from God. What do you need God to do for you? All of us have things in our life that have died. We have things that have happened to us that we don't like. Everyone in this room has had a disappointment, bad news, something that you've been told that bothered you. The scripture we're looking at this morning, uh, a father. In Matthew chapter 9, a father was told that his daughter was dead. She f fell ill and she died. How did she respond? How did he respond to that? How are you going to respond to the, the news that you get, the bad news? I'm glad that you responded adequately this morning. You decide to come to the house of the Lord. You decided to give it to God. In this life, you are going to have problems. In this life, you are going to have trouble. But we've come to give God our trouble this morning. We've come and asked God to help us this morning. Listen, I want to read a scripture verse here. While he was saying this, a ruler came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. I know this is a lot of verses, but the scripture is good. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. When Jesus entered the ruler's house, saw the flute players and the noisy crowd, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. News of the spread throughout all that region. About four months ago, we talked about this, these verses, but I want to look at it in a different context this morning. I want to look at it in the context of coming back to life, receiving of God. You know, as I look at the scripture here, there's two things that stand out to me. How did this individual come back to life? How did this girl, at the end of the story, this girl, she, she was healed, uh, she came back to life. How is your situation going to change? There's two things that I see happen here. One is the father went to God. The father uh, threw his, his, his life, his, he, he went to God, he asked Jesus to help him. The second thing we see here that uh, Jesus changed the environment. So there's two things I think that can help us as we're dealing with uh, uh, the things that have died in our life. Relationships. Something that has gone awry, uh, something that maybe it was, was working well, not working as good as it should be today. How is that going to turn around? The first thing the father did is he went to God. The second thing, when Jesus went to this, he, he took control of the situation. Friend, you're not going to get what you want if you aren't going to change the environment around you. But let's get to it and we'll get back to this. First of all, what do you mean by uh, uh, going to God? It says that the father, while he was saying this, a ruler came and knelt before him and said, here's what was happening. Jesus was teaching during this time. He was talking about in the verses before that uh, wineskins. And he was teaching the disciples about the things of the kingdom of God. But 
right during that time, a father that had a need went and erupt, interrupted Jesus. Let me say this. Jesus likes to be interrupted with your problem and your situation. Jesus likes to, to be told of what you're going through. That's what happened here. While he was saying this, a ruler came to him and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died. So, so when I look at this, you know, it, it seems like the father humbled himself. He was a ruler. He was a person of wisdom. He was of influence, of course, as the scriptures teach us. But he came and he knelt before him. He humbled himself. Friend, if you are going to receive what God has for you, you got to go to God and you got to humble yourself. If you're going to receive your miracle, if you're going to receive what you're looking for, you got to go to God. You got to break through all the clutter and you got to you got to lay yourself before God. That's what the ruler did. The ruler, I'm sure, had everything going for him. I'm sure he had servants. I'm sure he had finances. I'm sure he had everything at his disposal. But that wasn't going to change the situation. He needed a higher power. He needed God Almighty. And that's what he did. He, while Jesus was saying this, he came and he knelt. He humbled himself. Friend, we got to kneel before God. We got to, we got to abase ourselves. We got to somehow humble ourselves and ask God to help us. You want something to change in your life? Humble yourself. Listen, all of us have a proud streak. All of us have things that we're, we're, we're wired that way sometimes. But if, listen, but if you want the hand of God to move in your life, there comes a time where you got to lay it all down. Secondly, it says, my daughter has just died. Tell Jesus what's wrong with you. Tell Jesus what's wrong, what you're dealing with. Let him know plainly what problem you have. The scriptures teach us in the, in the New Testament that we don't receive because we don't ask. Here that the ruler just got to the point. He said, my daughter has died. Listen, what has died in your life that you need change? What has happened? What is there something that you don't like that you want to see Jesus change? Listen, God, help me with this relationship. God, help me with this job. God, help me with this relationship. Help me to get through this. Lord, I got this problem in my life. Help me with it. Listen, God moves when you talk to him. Feel free to let the Lord know plainly what you're dealing with. God, I'm struggling with this addiction. God, I'm, I'm dealing with these emotions. I'm, I'm depressed. Go to God with your problem. Friend, you want to see deliverance? You want to see some change in your life? You want to see God work in your life? You got to tell him what's wrong. He wants to hear from you. Listen, it goes on. My daughter just died. But come and put your hand on her. You know what I like? That the ruler just told Jesus what to do. You know how it could get fixed in your life. Tell Jesus how to do it. Listen, just say, Lord, if you do this, it could all turn around. God is not intimidated by you telling him how to work it out for you. Let the Lord know, Lord, listen, Lord, if you give me a little better job with more money, I'd be able to afford this. Lord, if you uh, change that person, uh, uh, okay, we got to be a little careful here. If you get my spouse to be this way or that way, things will be a little better around the home. Tell the Lord what you're dealing with. The Lord wants to hear from you and let the, the Lord know how you think it could change. The ruler said, listen, Jesus, go and put your hand on my daughter. Now, why would the ruler think that he could tell Jesus how to heal his daughter? But he did. And Jesus did exactly what he said. God is waiting for you to talk to him and tell him how to, to, you can get out of that problem. Lord, I got myself into this or whatever it may be. But if you do this, Lord, it could all turn around. Let the Lord know how he could turn it around for you. Listen, you know what? Right after this, it says Jesus got up and went with him. Jesus didn't say, no, I'm not going to do it that way. He did exactly what the father asked. Listen, friend, God wants to do what you ask him to do. Say, God, heal my spouse. Heal, help me with the change my boss. You know, change, uh, help, help my wife, help my husband. Tell the Lord how you want to see that change your life. 
Then it goes on and says, Jesus got up and went with him. He did it. Secondly, when Jesus entered the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd, he said, go away. How else are you going to see change come to your family? How are you going to see uh, the coming back up? How are you going to receive from God? The second thing here we quickly see is that Jesus changed the environment. You got to change those things that are hindering you or pulling you back. God wants to work in your life and to help you. God wants you to soar. But did you know that there's some people that want to weigh you down? There's some people that want to tie you down, that want to hold you back. You've got to change your environment. There's no way you're going to receive from God if you don't change those things around you that are trying to control you. Who's trying to hurt your faith? What is her trying to squeeze out God's blessing and favor in your life? You know what we see here? Jesus decided, okay, I'm going to do it. He got up, or I'm sure he decided that he, he wouldn't have walked there, and he, he went on his way. He, he started to go and do exactly what he said. Of course, he didn't put his hand on the girl because he wasn't there. But he went now and got to where the girl was, and there were people that were playing funeral music. They were depressing the situation. You know, sometimes what you got to do is get the clutter out of your life. You know, sometimes you got to, you, you got to, if you want faith to arise, you got to move the things around you. You know, uh, uh, what, what, what kind of music are you listening to? No, I know I'm stepping on some toes, but that's okay. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you heard me say this lately, you know, you turn on the news. You know, Joel says it this way, you could turn on the news for 10 minutes and get all you need. All they do is repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. But you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to bring you down. Are you going to let them control you? Are you going to allow someone that don't care about you and your family control your life? Or are you going to deposit something else in your heart? Faith and love. You know, sometimes I get caught up in this. You know, and then I, I get so angry that I turn on Christian music, 735 and Comcast. And you know, I found myself after five, ten minutes, the whole atmosphere changing. Your whole life could change if you change your environment. Who are you hanging around with? What are you allowing in it? You know, I hear uh, teaching several years ago, uh, uh, Paul, Joel's brother, talk about you got to be careful who you let in around you. You got to protect those things because your life depends upon it. You want a breakthrough. You want a miracle. And there's other forces around you that want to keep you from that. Now, I'm sure that they, they, they meant well because the girl, I guess, was dead. But it says, when he saw the flute players and the noisy crowd, he said, go away. You got to say, go away to those things that are holding you back. You want a breakthrough. You want to come back. You want that area of your family to come back to life. You got to take authority of it and say, go away. What is crowding? What is holding you back? What is trying to depress what God wants to liberate in your life? You got to say, go away. Whether it's an addiction, whether it's some kind of mood, whether it's anything that's trying to string you up or, or hamstring you or hurt you. Jesus was wise enough to push it away. Can you push those things away in your life that are meant to harm you and not get you there? Can you somehow you say go away? Can somehow you, you be like Jesus? Jesus was the son of God and he even had to get him away. Jesus was the son of God and he had all faith and power. And you know, he had a struggle during this time. If he struggled, you're going to struggle. The world wants to collapse you. God wants to raise you up. The world wants to do you in. God wants to bless you. God wants to help you. Be careful of your environment. You know, you've, you've heard me say, and I'll say it quick. Uh, uh, you know, I remember when I first was trying to live for the Lord. Uh, I, I found myself always struggling with friends who to hang around with. And finally, I had to shut myself in. And on every Friday night, I, I turned on a Christian program until I could start learning to live with the Lord instead of going, doing the things that were hurting me. you got to do the same thing. you got to clear the slate. 
You got to push away those things. I don't care if it's a person, it's a thing, it's a habit. Push them away. It's not worth it. Your destiny is at stake. Your future is at stake. Are you going to let something destroy you, creep in you, because they want to harm you instead of God's best for you? Okay, quickly. It says here, go away. The girl's not dead. You know another thing Jesus did? Jesus spoke to it in eyes of faith. He said, the girl's not dead. Sometimes you got to call it a little differently. But you know what? Jesus was now beginning to work. God wants to work in your life. God wants to revive it. You know what you got to say? You got to push it aside. Those things that are trying to hold you back. Then you got to begin to call it for what it is. The girl's not dead. My marriage is not over. My, my job, I'm still going to be successful in the Lord. My kids are going to do, do well. You got to then begin to speak faith. You've got to begin to speak the way you want to see it. How do you want to see your life this year coming into 2019? You've got to speak it. You've got to say, okay, I'm going to start pushing it out of the way. I'm going to do my part, but then I'm going to speak how I want to see my life. That's what Jesus did here. He said, listen, the girl's not dead. My life is not over. I'm going to pass that test. I'm going to go through that. My family is going to do well. You got to speak it the way you want to see it. You got to say it. You got to speak it the way you want to believe that God wants to help you with it. God, I want a good family. You got to speak that. But then, as a course, you got to get away those things that is going to hurt you from having a good family. You got to go to God and say, God, here's the way I want it. Secondly, it goes, thirdly, it goes, but they laugh. Don't worry about those that are going to laugh at you. I wasn't going to get into that point, but it's, it's a true point. Don't worry about the world laughing at you. The world is never going to be your friend. Amen. I'm telling you, the world is never going to applaud you. As a matter of fact, the world doesn't like you. If they didn't like Jesus, do you think they're going to like you? Unless you have a lot of the world in you. Unless you're like the world, then they're going to like you. But if you're trying to serve God... So you're going to be an enemy to the world. And I'm not saying you got to fight. All, I didn't say that. But you've got to understand where your standing is. The world is here to tear down everything that is good and is of God. The world has never been in love with Jesus and wants to partner with Jesus. The world is not here to help you. The world is trying to hurt you and your family. Understand that. Understand that sometimes that you're going to have to stand alone. Understand sometimes you're going to have to, you're going to have to trust God alone. Understand sometimes it's going to only be you and Jesus. But that's enough, my brother, my sister. You and Jesus is a plurality. Listen, I'd rather have Jesus as a friend than all those of the world. You and Je Jesus standing with you, you can go somewhere. Jesus standing with you, he can take you places that you never dreamed were possible. I'd rather serve God than anything that this world has to offer. Okay, here we go. Go away. The girl is not dead. Your life is not dead. Your life is not over. That addiction is not going to swallow you up. You, you came to God today. You've gotten out of bed. You, you laid your family before God. You laid your relationships before God. You're, you're going somewhere with God. Here, after the crowd had been put outside. Put the crowd outside. Put the crowd outside. Get rid of those people that are... Chicken, says Joe, Pastor Joe. My, I quoted him three times today. You know, if God's called you to fly like an eagle, why do you want to hang around chickens? If God's called you to soar, to do good things for him, why do you want to play around with those things that are trying to keep you from soaring? You start hanging around chickens long enough, you will forget how it is to soar and to be in God. You'll, you know, you, you, you put a, Eagle in with chickens, probably after a while, the eagle will think he's a chicken. I don't know. I got to read how Joel said that last time. Listen, friend. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in. Jesus couldn't do what he wanted to do till he put the crowd outside. He said, go away. 
I don't know. Sometimes you say go away and the crowd still stays around. You got to be insistent. Sometimes you'll say, oh, go away. And you know what? They, the devil wants to see if you're really serious. Are you really serious about your life? Are you really serious about the addiction? Are you really serious about the, those things that are hurting you? If you just say go away, okay, that's one thing. But eventually you're going to have to say the second, third time, go away. I meant it. What, you're, what I'm saying is, is you're putting your foot down and you're seeing that your life and your family, what God has for you, your future is more important. You got to protect your family. You got to protect. And the devil wants to take over your family. You are standing between what God wants to do. As a matter of fact, you're, God is covering your family through you. It's true. And you, the devil wants to destroy what God is doing. God has called you because he wants to raise you up. God wants to bless you. God wants to help you. After the crowd has been put outside, put the noisemakers outside. Put those people that are hurting you outside. Have no fellowship with them. I know that's tough. Those things that are trying to hurt you, put them outside. Listen, because you know what happened? You, the resurrection happened after that. Maybe God is waiting to see how serious you are. Maybe God is waiting to see if you will push out those things before he gives you what you've been asking for. Listen, and then he went in and took the girl by the hand. He pushed him outside, and you know what he did? Then he took by the hand. You know, sometimes until we get the clutter away, we're not going to act in faith the way we know it. Sometimes we're not going to be bold until we get rid of those voices. The best thing you can do is feed your spirit. This is good. We need, we need this. But this is just a part of your week. You need to feed your spirit all week long. You need Jesus inside you strong all week long. Here's what happened. He then went in and took the girl by the hand. He pushed him aside and he went in. Listen, some of you need to go in to those places that need to be resurrected and you're not going to do it until you start getting some things right in your life. It's not going to happen until you push aside, until you go. You, you know that God will help you. You know that God will get you there. You know that he will raise him up. He'll, he will help you take it by the hand. But you're not going to do it. Your faith is going to be too weak if you don't get rid of those things. It's not going to happen. It's going to cloud you. So Jesus did it. This is the Son of God. We're learning from him this morning. He, he cleared the dust. He, he got things right. He, 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 his, his life became uncluttering. And then he went and he took by the hand. You know what happened? She got up. Some of you are needing a resurrection. Some of you are needing something to change. Some of you here this morning are needing God to do something for you. Here's just a, a prescription. How God did it through a father. And then how he finished the job. How he made it happen. I believe if we follow these things, we can see God do some things in our life that will help us and get us there. Listen, God loves you. God cares for you. God knows where you're at this morning. Don't allow the devil to control your life. Don't allow the enemy to set the, the agenda in your life. Don't allow the enemy to ruin you and to dictate your life. Sometimes you got to just break it. Sometimes you just got to say enough is enough. You got to get mad and you got to break it. Then you'll step into your destiny. Then you'll step into that healing. Then you'll step into that breakthrough. It wasn't until Jesus did all that. He took the girl by the hand. You're going to take that thing by the hand that you're needing in your life, that healing, that breakthrough. It's going to happen because God is with you. And then all of a sudden the father answered. The father answered and worked and he received the miracle. You know what I like about this? News of the spread throughout all that region. Then God began to do something that they were praying for and believing for. Some of you are needing God to help you in a special way. I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Father, we love you. 
We need you. Please work in our lives, we pray. Please help us. Change us. Lord, we come to you this morning because we need you. The people came here this morning because they put you first. They did. So bless them and help them fight their battles. Is there someone here that would say, Pastor, pray for me, help me. I need God this morning. Is there someone here that would say, I need God. I've drifted a little bit. I just need God. If that's you, no one looking around, raise your hand. This is only between you and the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I raise my hand too. Let's all say this together, can we? Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. Change me. Help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, please help your people. Fight their battles. We plead the blood of Jesus over every individual and their family here this morning. We pray strength, encouragement. Father, fight for your people, we pray. You love them. They're your children. Fight for them, we pray. Help them. In Jesus' name, amen.